and then it's a rather frosty morning and to give you an idea of what I'm on about you see over here this little bit here is not frosty that's how frosty it is I'm not sure I've seen so much frost to be quite honest with you I'm relieved that there are pockets still without frost uh, but this is quite a lot of frost most of the, well, I don't think you can see that most of the uh, brush is frosty that field looks white and I don't think it had been snowing it's not been snowing uh, it's frost so I did feel it go cold as the sun was heading down last night and I was a little bit cold so I got a second blanket out but uh, it wasn't as cold as it has been but there's more frost and I don't know where the logic is in that but it's the truth as I'm surprised by the amount of frost here on this little bit of the walk here not much frost at all on the path maybe afforded by the trees and the, the shelter but where like, or where that's ploughed that, that was very uh, I'm assuming it was ploughed it's got so many little ridges all the way across the landscape in that field so all that newer life little tiny bits of life whereas up there it's kind of way older and less frosty so last night we didn't really have the best quality sleep Bear decided he'd get upset uh, and I couldn't work out why. He was crying so I took him out. He didn't want to wee, he didn't want to poo. He just wanted to stand there in, in the outdoors. So I took him back inside, settled down to bed and he was crying again. Then he started barking. I thought, I can't be doing with this all night. I put him outside and uh, he proceeded to bark most of the night. Bear was frosty this morning. His behaviour last night just shows how he doesn't want to be with us if he can be outside uh, I suppose that's about the end of it really which is not good for, for me or Batty or Elsa because we're not sleeping properly when he's going on with himself which is making life difficult because when you don't get a good quality sleep and you've got stuff to do and you're fuzzy headed you make mistakes uh, more often so important to get good quality sleep and I was up a little later than usual because I was sorting bits and pieces out. Uh, was feeling into a new routine and uh, designing my new routine was according to bring out the bits of me that I don't nurture enough. So I've been redesigning my routine, which has then meant that uh, 
I was a little later going to bed and then that wouldn't have been so bad at all if Bear hadn't have started it would have meant I'd have got eight hours but I've got prob probably a broken six hours because of his behaviour so I really am not best pleased with him we're gonna have this walk he should be tired anyway keeping himself up all night barking instead of snoring and uh I'm going to go back. I'm really, really looking forward to some warm porridge and a cup of chamomile tea. But not for Bear. Bear doesn't get porridge or chamomile tea. What I'll be doing for them this morning, they've got chicken and rice waiting for them in the pan. And I'm going to uh, make them a hot gravy uh, to give them a little bit of something not that bear needs it but fatty and elsa will appreciate the warmth of a morning and uh, on a morning like this i'm going to make some scrambled eggs with the eggs from some of the chickens so uh, so the the chickens and ducks can have a nice warm breakfast along with their seeds as I'm walking I'm seeing the difference now where the life's been established longer which is obviously looking the size of those cork oaks and then looking at this obviously managed ploughed land the massive area of non-frost around those trees is amazing I noticed it somewhere else as well. I'll show you on the way back. I am really noticing the difference between um, man's uh, controlled environment and Pachamama's uh, natural being. Here's what I noticed. As you can see this bit, has not been managed at all for some time. And you see the rocks, oh, look at that, look at the moss, look at the plants all over the, the moss, the lichen, look at the life, look at the temperature difference where all this life has been allowed to just do its thing. So here is and it isn't the sun, the sun's only just coming through. Yet, yeah, as you, you look, all this seems quite free from frost. Um, but as you come out of these, this area, straight away, look at the frost here. But go back into the sanctuary of the rocks and the... Uh, the older trees that haven't really been managed and the mosses and the lichens, you'll see it's got a totally different temperature, a different climate, it's a different environment. I'm loving it. I'm going to have a look at my land and see what's the difference there between my manicured land and the land that has certainly not been manicured for quite some time next door. They've just been fed, but they just want me to give them food. So this, mine's more manicured, it's very frosty. This bit, I don't think really counts too much because it's all hay. But here, where the mimosas doing what it wants the old fig tree which isn't giving shade and those olives that hasn't been pruned you've got a, a lot warmer there the grass is not frosty at all stretching out to the open spaces you have frost around each of the bases of the trees you have a a small like around the crown of the trees I suppose you have an unfrosted bit of uh, of land so here again all all here 
he's not frosty. There he is. And there's very frosty in there. So I suppose in this particular uh, place, it uh, doesn't seem to have made much difference. I'll have a look up top. So here you can see the frost does go right up to here. And this ground is a mixture between frost and not. I'll try and climb up here. But well, under here, where the big tree is, the big oak, cork oak, no frost at all. So you can see how the bigger trees, especially with the bigger crowns like the cork oak, are protecting everything underneath it and providing a much gentler climate and shelter for those that live, those organisms that live in, in, its, in its space. Well, I'm absolutely Donald Ducked. I've had a bit of a crazy day, to be honest. I was something like four hours early for a client because I was that tired that I misread my appointment. Uh, which isn't like me and I'm kind of on track and been doing stuff but I'm also very tired and very I'm kind of still annoyed in fact I'm walking there a little bit later than I should have been but the little bugger was asleep anyway and I thought, right, you are coming out and you are going for a walk, whether you're asleep or not. And we're going to go and you're going to have that full walk and then go back. And I hope to goodness you sleep tonight because you're doing me head in with your na naughtiness last night. And you're whinging and barking, which hasn't happened for a very long time. And there was no reason why it should have happened last night, which I can understand that I can get my head around. So I can't see that there's any excuses. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go because I know I'll be rambling and most of it will probably be broken biscuits because now I'm at that time of the day where everything's fed, including me. We're on our walk. And there is nothing else to do today other than sort all the animals out and put them to bed um, and then I get a catch up with my friend which I could have done with being a bit more compass mentis for but this is how it's supposed to be the universe has uh, decided that come on bear stop being a bug um, so going with the flow of the universe and uh surrendering to what is because that's the way it's set up come on right so I'm going to call it quits for the videos for today unless something fantastically wonderful comes up and uh, bid you all a loads and loads of love and say goodnight and I, I'll be back hopefully tomorrow feeling more refreshed if Bear learns to sleep and behave himself overnight. Come on, Furball. Come on. We're going for a walk. Come on. Dogs, eh? You'd have them.